Good afternoon and welcome to today's Finance Committee hearing. My name is Julissa Ferreras Copeland. I'm the chair of the committee. We've been joined by Minority Leader Mario, Majority Leader Van Bramer, Levine, Rodriguez, and Johnson. I know other members are going to be walking in um, as the hearing goes. Today we have six items on the agenda, an expense budget modification, a capital budget modification, a pre-considered resolution, a transparency resolution, and a land use item, um, and a bid item. Let's start with the budget modification. The expense budget modification represents movement in the funding between and within city agencies to reallocate appropriations in the city's fiscal 2018 expense budget to fund city council local initiatives as well as other discretionary programs. The net fiscal impact of the modification is zero. The capital budget modification reallocates appropriations that were reflected in fiscal 2018's capital budget to fund city council initiatives. The net fiscal impact of this modification is also zero. Next, we have a pre-considered resolution that as per agreement with the administration would rescind a term and condition attached to units of appropriation 107 in the fiscal 2018 budget of the Department of Social Services. Next, we have a transparency resolution that sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council, or other entities are identified in the attached chart with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If a council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Rohan Grant from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding the disclosures. Next, we have the land use item. Nolan Plaza in Councilmember Gibson's district in the Bronx, this property will receive a partial 40-year property tax exemption to preserve 283 units of affordable housing through the city's HDFC program. Representatives from HPD are here to answer any questions we may have on the land use item. Lastly, we have the bid item, Resolution 1639, set forth October 17, 2017, as 10 a.m. in this room as a date, time, and place to hold a public hearing considering the local law that would authorize an increase in the budget of 11 bids. The budget increase have been requested by property owners within the boundaries of each bid and would be used to enhance the services provided. The 11 bids that are seeking budget increases are the 34th Street bid in Councilmember Johnson's district, the 82nd Street bid, which sits in my district, Councilmember and Councilmember Drum's district, the Church Avenue bid and the Flatbush bid, which are both in Councilmember Eugene's district, the Downtown Lower Manhattan bid, and the Soho Broadway bid, which are both in Councilmember Chin's district, the Dumbo bid in Councilmember Le Levin's district, the East Mid Manhattan bid and the Times Square bid, which are both in Councilmember Gorodnik's district, <clears throat> excuse me, the Fordham Road bid in Councilmember Cabrera and Councilmember Torres district, and the King's Highway bid in Councilmember Greenfield and Councilmember Deutsch's district. Each of these council members have submitted a letter in support of the requested budget increases. More information regarding the specific amounts of the assessment increases and the reasons for the request can be found in the committee report prepared by the Finance Division. Representatives from the Small Business, um, from the Department of Small Business Services, are here to answer any questions you may have on the resolution. Are there any questions? Uh, seeing none, I will now ask Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the roll. Billy Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Ferreris Copeland. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Van Bramer. Aye. Johnson. I vote aye. Levine. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Matteo. Aye. By a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. 
Thank you. And I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge the Finance Committee while we kind of went through very quickly this vote that's very important to the process. This committee, I mean, the um, division has been working very, very hard to make all of this happen. So if I can ask for a round of applause for all the staff in the finance division, led by Latanya McKinney. Um, so we appreciate all your work, um, and hopefully we can get this voted out. We will keep the roll open for an additional 15 minutes. Staff, if your member is not in, oh, well, we have Adonis. Um, any additional staff that's here for a vote, please make sure that you tell your member they have 15 minutes to get here. Councilmember Rodriguez. Aye. 